So our, uh, our theme is creating an abundant life, uh, and this is what I'm working with today. In Science of Mind, we understand that the universe that we live in is an abundant universe. And we believe that life is trying to bring us what we desire, what we desire with our heart and with our soul. You know, almost everything you truly need or want, we believe, is here already. You only need to, one, really desire it, two, believe, and I would say three, be willing to accept it. So there's something there about desire and believing, but also the ability to accept. We have been programmed, I think, largely by our society, the world we've grown up in, to think in terms of scarcity and lack. You know, that we hear things all again and again and again, that there's not enough to go around, and you have to work hard and sacrifice for all you get, and that it's immoral and even selfish to have enough when others don't. And it's more spiritual to struggle and to be without. We would say in the science of mind that all of those things are false beliefs. We don't teach uh, the idea of sin, but those are definitely error beliefs. They lack understanding of how the universe works. Now, yes, I'm, saying, I'm not denying that there are things in the world that could certainly be better. That yes, there are situations where there is starvation and there is poverty for many people on the face of the earth today. But we do not need to keep creating or perpetuating those experiences. And this teaching is part of how we do that. You know, there is more than enough to go around for every being on earth. If we are willing to open our minds to that possibility, right? So just that right there, that if we could come into agreement that there is more than enough for every person on the face of the earth, that right there is extraordinarily powerful if we are in agreement around that idea. You know, and now I would also add to that that probably we've got to change our way of using and distributing the world's resources. Yeah, okay, that's, that's certainly an important aspect as well. But years ago, Buckminster Fuller said, we now have the capability to feed, house, and support everyone on the planet. See, God has created an abundant earth. And this great physicist, mathematician guy actually went and did the math and figured out that every person, if we could divvy up all the resources on the face of the earth, every person could live as a millionaire. Isn't that amazing? I just think that that's thrilling. You know? So are you holding yourself back by not believing sufficiently in the possibility of abundance and prosperity? See? By not believing in that, we actually hold ourselves back. We keep ourselves down. We keep ourselves limited to some extent. So you know, I want to um, say that the way I think it works is you get paid for what you do. You know, it seems to me the game is we put goods and ideas and services out into the world, and the world compensates us for that good. There are no free lunches. Really, there are no free lunches, not even at Costco. That is not a free lunch. <laughs> I am here to tell you. you know? Now, we teach in the science of mind that what goes around comes around. Right? So in Matthew, Jesus says, judge not that you be not judged. So I believe Jesus really understood cause and effect, because he was saying, hey, Everyone gets their due in time. What goes around comes around. And if you're putting a judgmental energy out into the universe, it's going to come back at you. You're going to feel judged by other people. So Emerson referred to this spiritual law as the high chancellor of God. He thought that much of this idea, the high chancellor of God. Now, Ernest Holmes says it like this. He says, the law of cause and effect is a law of perfect balance have logical sequence and of inevitable consequence. Whatever a man sows, he must reap. And so the way I say it is the universe is always trying to balance the accounts. Right? Every person's actions produce an effect in their life in which will ultimately, ultimately show up as the experience of their life. So we have to understand this or we think people are just lucky or some people are favored by God or this person's blessed but I'm not. You know, or they were in the right place at the right time, born under a lucky star, and on and on and on, wondering, why did this not happen for me? Well, the truth is, it absolutely can happen for you. Go back to the first part of the talk about believing, right? 
The universe keeps perfect balance, like I said. We do not have to worry about that. It's not our business, right? People get their due. God is never off duty. And also, what I want to say here, and I think this is really important, is that what is yours is yours by right of consciousness. So if you have earned some measure of good, the universe is trying to bring that to you. Now, I realize sometimes it doesn't come from where we think it should. I think I did something good for you. You need to do something in response to me. But that's not always the way it works. Sometimes you do good over here, and it comes back to you from somewhere else. We have to trust the universe is keeping things in perfect balance, right? So, and what, what are we, the other thing I have to say here is, what are we doing minding other people's business anyway? It is just better to wish them well and know that their karma is most likely not going to be worked out in front of us. Because it's not. That's between them and God. It's between them and the law of the universe. We think someone is obliged to us in some way. Well, I did that. Oh, they should do this for me. That's not how it works. I must forget about their consciousness and just work on my own. That's how it works. See, it's not that God punishes, but there are consequences. And you know, parents, you can teach your kids this from early, early on, that there are just consequences. This, these, we're working with the laws of the universe and the science of mind, and there are consequences when we violate those laws. You know, we say there's no sin, but there's an error, and there's no punishment, but there are consequences. So going back quite a ways, in the Hindu teachings of karma, karma is the fixed consequence of one's acts. It is a cycle of comeuppance, of retribution, that continues from one life to the next. And one is linked to this wheel of past lives. Nothing we ever do is lost. So that's in that system of thought. Now, out of Hinduism steps the Buddha, right? So Buddha actually created, Buddhism is a schism of Hinduism. You know, stepping out of Hinduism, the Hindu caste system, Buddha came to teach us the law of cause and effect. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. He came to teach this way of the middle road, that the way to pursue advanced consciousness was not through great excess or great de deprivation and suffering, but being aware that every action produces a reaction that it's best not to cling to the inner world or the outer world because all suffering comes from that kind of attachment. And it's best not to cause any suffering. So that was Buddha. Now speed ahead 500 years comes Jesus onto the scene. And the difference here of Jesus, his teaching about compensation and other teachings, is that Jesus also stressed the divinity of every person right now. Right now, you are the sons and daughters of the Most High. So we are not seeking to reach up to the divine. We are now part of its life. We are emanations of the Most High God. So how is it that every action produces an effect that we have to ultimately experience? How is this so? Well, Science of Mind teaches us that we are surrounded by a universal law that is impartial. It receives the impress of our thoughts and returns to us exactly what we have set in motion there. So because of this law, we reap what we have sown. Oh, yeah. Um, this is why it's so important for us to consider our motives, our thoughts, our desires for ourselves, but also for others as well. You know, ask yourself, what do I want of others? What do I want for other people? Am I big enough to be really joyful when someone else succeeds? You know, am I a big enough person to be really compassionate when they're going through difficulties? Let's think about our own life right now. What am I giving out in the way of my action to the world around me? Do I intentionally cause suffering? Or am I one of those people where when I leave the room, people say, God, I always feel better when he's around. See, what I know for myself is I don't want to be that person who walks out of the room and people say, oh my God, I thought he'd never leave. <laughs> oh my God, he just sucked all the life and joy out of the room. Is he Mr. Negative or what? I don't want to be that person, you know? Um, so I think we could, another way to say this is we could say, what's the general content, the quality of your heart? See, compensation means the thoughts of judgment and criticism and condemnation, they gotta go. There's no place for them, right? So, 
I had read in a uh, Charles Schultz uh, Peanuts cartoon, you all know Peanuts, right? Uh, Linus and Lucy are talking, and Linus says to Lucy, why are you so critical? And Lucy says to Linus, I think I have a knack for seeing other people's faults. Yeah. <laughs> and then Linus says to Lucy, well, what about your faults? And Lucy says, I have a knack for overlooking them. <laughs> yeah. Right? Is that us? Is that us? Do we think God has given us a special gift for seeing what's wrong with other people? You know, and, especially, and, it, and also that it must be our special assignment to somehow shape them up, you know, to, by, by constantly reminding them of where they're falling short. Yes, that's my special gift. No, no, it's not. Uh, this is why we have to get off the condemnation and judgment of others, because it's coming back to us whether we see it or whether we realize it or not. Ultimately, it does not serve us. This is why we have to stop also, we have to stop all self-condemnation. It isn't serving any of us. You cannot condemn yourself into an abundant, prosperous life. Just like you cannot condemn yourself into a loving relationship, you cannot condemn yourself into good health, it does not serve. It produces more of what we don't want. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. You know, what a huge, vast waste of the life energy. I say, hey, Admit if you judge, you know, I think we all do probably. Admit it, forgive yourself, move on, and promise yourself you will do better the next time. That's what we can do. You know, God has been very patient with us in the process of waking up. You know, God didn't rush us. You know, the signs may have been there, but we may have gone the other way a number of times. I know I did, right? But now it's our job to be patient with the other people in our life in their process of waking up because nobody can see until they can see. Nobody can do better until they, from within themselves, have the capacity to do better. You know, we're the path to our own happiness. Looking outside, we will not find it. I wonder today, how many of us have ever been happy for no reason? You know, you just wake up someday, and you're just, you just feel good. You feel like you're in the flow with life. That, I don't know, I just feel great about life. You know? I believe we can feel that way all the time. You know, but I think we don't feel that way because other stuff gets in the way. That constant judgment, that's what takes us out of the kingdom. That kingdom consciousness, that kingdom of heaven is within us. So if that has been you, my encouragement is just forgive yourself for it. For whatever reason, it seemed necessary at the time. But now look for what is good and right in other people and, and be the person who brings it out of them. And remember what's good and right in you and be willing to give that forth. Don't worry about people getting a big head. I used to hear about that all the time, you know. Oh, we don't want you to get full of yourself. You'll get a big head. What a dumb thing to say. <laughs> First of all, if you get a big head, the worst thing is you're going to have to get a bigger hat, okay? <laughs> so you have a bigger hat, you know. But, you know there, but there's so much detrimental training had been done all in the fear that somebody's going to get a big head. They're going to think, you know, too much of themselves. Yeah, we don't want you feeling too good about yourself. After all, you might actually get some self-esteem. And then that would make the rest of us who have no self-esteem feel really uncomfortable. You know, I mean, that's just crazy. That's just crazy. Science of Mind says the universe is based on love. God is love. And all the errors that we make are the result of ignorance, of our, of our true nature. Now, this also means that the mistakes other people make are due to the ignorance of their true nature, that they have forgotten. Now, we can't think of ourselves as just a body. You know, we're spirit, and we happen to have a body while we're here on Earth because we need a body to learn the lessons of the Earth plane. But, you know, the positive aspect of this philosophy is to look at life through a constructive lens, to have an open heart. You know, don't you want to be that beneficial presence wherever you go, where people are thrilled that you're there. You know, the people say, I don't know why, but when I'm around them, I just feel better. I feel hopeful. I feel positive. I feel affirmative around them. I think that's who we want to be. See, the really evolved soul judges no one. And haven't we all said about someone at some time, well, you know, they're growing, they're learning, or they just have their own path. You know, so if we can have that level of compassion and understanding for someone, we can have it for everyone. You know, it's the law 
Spiritual law is doing its perfect work, not God judging us, because God doesn't judge. Rewards and punishments, those are not our business. You know, I can't imagine how anybody could be happy who lives in a constant state of condemning other people. I just don't think it's possible because science of mind teaches us that we are all one. So if you're judging other people all the time, if you're condemning other people all the time, you're going to feel that yourself. See, that's, and that would be a very poor person. That's someone who doesn't know that what they put out into the universe is coming back to them. By our mind being filled with the thoughts of God, though, thoughts of love and thoughts of healing and thoughts of peace, by that being primary in our consciousness, you know, people can be healed in our presence. Now, that is worthwhile compensation. You know, can we go beyond the law of cause and effect? Yes, absolutely. And what Ernest Holmes teaches us is that in a moment when you really have a spiritual realization, so you're doing treatment, you're praying in the affirmative for yourself, and you realize that the truth about God that is within you is more true, is more real than anything that's happening out here, you w lift off that wheel of karma. All karma is ended then, and in that moment, grace takes over. So you can get off that wheel of cause and effect, absolutely. You know, higher, the higher law of spirit overrides the lower laws of, mental, of the mental and the physical plane. So we're here to remember our divinity. This is what we have to hold on to, that we are emanations, sons and daughters of the Most High God. We are one with the transcendent spirit. And by knowing the truth of our spiritual unity, we can go beyond whatever experience of suffering, and in particular, whatever experience of lack we may have believed in. And the result is that we get to, we get to, we don't have to, but we get to live a happy, abundant, loving, fulfilled life. Let's do that. Start now. Let's pray. <laughs> Thanks. So we turn our attention inward for a moment, recognizing that right here where we are, the fullness, the allness of God's spirit, God that is infinite love and infinite abundance is right here. We are connected with God. We are connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And I speak this word for each and every one of us that we are in the process of creating a more abundant consciousness than we have ever known. We say yes to the good of God, the good that is freely given to each and every one of us. And we don't deny ourselves or anyone else any of God's good. So I claim for us today that there is great healing, that there is rising up within each and every one of us, that we let go of any notion, any belief, any habit that has kept us small or kept us in lack, kept us fearful or doubting. We just let that go right now knowing that it is absolutely the will of God that we thrive in every good and perfect way. So we include in our prayer our family members, our friends, our loved ones, parents and children. And we know that right where they are, God is. Surrounding them, filling them, guiding, guarding, protecting. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world in which we live. So everything that's pulled at our attention, we say God is right there. There is nothing to be fearful about. God is present in all of it, as love, as healing, as all needs met. We bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together, that there is raising up for each and every one of us, that today we've let go of something that doesn't serve us anymore, and we've opened ourselves to a greater experience of God life, God love, and God abundance. And so with a full heart, I give thanks that this is the truth. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen.